Hi there, welcome back. Uh, I'm Catherine, if you're new here, and welcome to a bit of my day. Usually works out to be about 30 minutes, more or less, depending on what kind of chatterbox I am. I have been engrossed in this video, video, uh, in this journal that I have created thanks to inspiration from Shabby Soul, Susie over at Shabby Soul. Very talented artist. Um, and check her out. So, um, I, I want this page. So I'm just going to put that on the page. We'll work on it together, don't worry. I want to come back a bit. Ooh, there we go. And uh, we can take a look at how... I don't know about you, th this just screams yummy to me. It just... It's everything I hoped it would be. And I am... I am so torn... <laughs> Not very often I keep a journal. I'm usually so thrilled to send them out into the world. Part of me is tempted to even keep this even just for a little while. Sorry, there's a little piece of paper there. Even just for a little while so I can remember what I did. <laughs> Mostly. Um, on the other hand, I simply cut two boards from other, uh, I had a big book cover that I had already used one side of it. And I saved the other one, because you never know when you can use that kind of heavy duty board as is a book cover, especially a good quality one. And, uh, and I needed one, and there it was, I had it. So I painted it, you, you probably were with me when I painted it and aged it and we put some, uh, some of the marbled paper um, on the front and on the back. Not sure if I'm done with the back yet or not. May put a pocket on there. Um, I have some leftover marbled paper so I did have some fun embossing that. I don't know if it's showing up but we'll play with that a bit and I left some flat and I'll be putting this back into the book somehow but I wanted to try my hand at making a journal where the signatures have no rhyme or reason as to the size of the folios. And uh, I gotta tell you, it was one heck of a lot of fun. It was harder than I thought it would be because sewing these signatures to make sure that the holes are poked in the right place, wowie, that was challenging. And then to make sure that they were centered into my soft spine that I created um, was another challenge. And then for me, there's always a challenge in if my, if my, um, text block threads are going to be showing, I really want them to be straight. It's just me. So uh, we worked that out. At least I'm happy with them. And uh, and as, as wacky as this is, I'm going to try not to do too much of a flip through. Otherwise, w where's the fun in the when I do the flip through? Anyhow, I'm, I'm tempted to even hold on to it for a little while to keep it as a template. But on the other hand, I I just know that maybe there's someone out there who's thinking, 
Wow, that's a really cool journal. At least I hope so, because I'm just in love with how this turned out. And I can't believe, usually I'm in love with the journals I make from old books. And here's this journal created from ripped up paper. Most of the pages are hand torn. They're not even uh, tearage ruler torn. Some are straight because I still wanted to make sure it was a junk journal and I did put in, there's a little Beatrix Potter in here. There's a little, um, some Pittman shorthand, that sort of thing is still in here um, for fun and a little variety. But you're going to see there is a ton of of either artist's room or writing room for people who like to write things in their journals. So um, I haven't decided what to do with these yet because as you can see, yes, I opted for the three hole pamphlet stitch, which I do not enjoy and it actually cooperated with me this time. I'm usually one of those people that notoriously pokes my needle right through the thread. <sighs> this journal cooperated with me. Maybe that's also why I, I am in love with it. Um, anyhow, let's, let's do a little bit of work. Let's see if we can find 30 minutes worth of work on this book. I'll let you sort of guess what's in it. I want that over. Where's another one? Pardon my arm. There. I yeah, I I even sewed in a actual lace doily as a signature and I'm in love with it too. So I want to, I have a bit of the, a, a bit of the marbled paper and I have some lace and I want to put this here and make a um, tuck spot. Maybe an up tuck or whatever you wish it to be. This and the, I chose a few other things that I want to put in, came from a book that I found. I find, I find books on my shelves that I think, oh yeah, I forgot I got that book. That's ridiculous. But I'm happy I found it, called On Holiday. And it's just remembering yesterday's holidays. And it's just, chock full of old postcards, photographs. Um, it's based in the UK, so it's all holiday and vacation places in the UK in the good old days. And um, it's wonderful. So I have I went through and picked out a few things that uh, that appealed to me and we'll just work on them a little bit um, today since since we're together since I managed to show up <sighs> I've had such a um, you know how sometimes people say, oh, I lost my mojo or in our, in our little crafty corner of the world, wait, I'm not going to glue yet. Um, I've heard it called Jujo because journal, journal juice. I don't know what the Joe is about, but anyhow. Um, and what I, for at least this week, I just found that I was getting more done, actually lately, 
not without my camera going. So I think I want to put a pocket there and cover up that writing. It's got to be something easy because that's not going to be easy to work on. And a pocket is a better place because that wouldn't even be easy for someone if I made this into, like for example, I could put some paper on it and turn it into a journaling spot, but that lace makes it an uncomfortable journaling spot unless I make a journaling board. And quite frankly, this book is busy enough without a journaling board. So, um, we shall see. I think a pocket though, and maybe that would be a place to use this, just to create. Or maybe our holiday on the barge would make a good pocket. Hmm. We'll see. I keep saying we'll see. All right, happy with that. Um, still thinking about these, whether I just simply want to trim them, whether I want to leave them a little bit longer so that the next person, if they want to, they could put beads on them or little little paper charms. Not sure yet. Let me know what you think down below. What you would do with all the threads from the from the uh, three hole pamphlet stitch. I was tempted to leave them on the outside but I feel like there's enough going on. So I want to make another tuck spot. This was a um, this was also out of that book and it's a ticket so I'm going to um, find a ruler Ta -da! I'm going to find a ruler flip it over to the correct side and there we go So what I did was I left myself enough of the page so that I can double it up and make it strong. If you're not sure what I'm doing, you'll get it in a second. It's, I did the same thing over on this one. I did the same thing here. If I could flip that over, you'd see that it's actually a folded piece of of the page from that book. So because this is a little glossy, I'm going to use three in one. Um, I find it holds better than regular paper glues with glossy papers. You do have to be careful because the acetone in three in one will pull up the ink off glossy paper. So if you need to be able to lift it and replace it somewhere, um, you better hope you did it right the first time. So that doubles that and just makes it a little bit um, A little bit stiffer so that it can be a little tuck spot and it's a ticket toll or landing and embarking Halden Pier hmm. all right scissors so I hope you're all doing well We've had spring-like weather when we really should still be up to our eyeballs in snow, but it is what it is. Now the nice thing is 
within another two weeks our little my little book sale as if I need more books but I enjoy going up there uh, we'll be back on again so usually the first Saturday in April so that's not long away there we go so now we've got ticket and when it dries it'll be a little bit stiffer and will hold all oh, that stain we'll hold just a little little note paper where did my sponge go there it is So we've had a gazillion birthdays in our family. This was a popular time of year for babies to arrive, of all the grandbabies. We have several of those throughout the year. When you have that many grandchildren, you tend some of them tend to arrive all at the same time and then I'll have a little break. October is a break. We have a son-in-law and my sister-in-law is October and that's it. So they're the kind of birthdays where I can just call or text and wish them a happy birthday. Um, but grandbabies, they gotta have, they gotta have presents and know that they're very much loved. Um, Hmm, this was a cool, here, let me pick this up. This was a cool Beatrix Potter because it was French. So part of me wants to cover up one side, but leave the other side so that you know it was French. Hmm. That's a tux, tuck spot. Maybe I should put this on this side because that's already nice and firm. And then it can be journaled on and it can be tucked in. So these are tricky, I'm finding, first of all, because it's not a hidden hollow back spine, so it doesn't do the lay flat that hidden hollow back spines do. But I have a feeling it eventually will because of the soft spine and the floppy nature of it. So I'm not too worried about that. And there's just oodles of room for more stuff to go into this journal. And of course, now my brain is going because I'm thinking, what else have I got here that I could make this kind of journal again? It was so much fun. <laughs> so I have had a nice week. I just um, wasn't having any luck with my chatter. Or at least I certainly didn't feel like it was. And uh, I was getting more work done by just quietly working at my desk. And I do find that happens with me once in a while. Sometimes I sort of run out of, I can't believe it, uh, run out of things to say. <laughs> what? She ran out of things to say? <laughs> My parents wouldn't believe that. Neither would any of my teachers at school. <laughs> or my husband. But he can talk as much as I can. A 
I like the red in this. And you know me, I'm a red kind of girl. Now I've got to decide. <sighs> hmm. I, thought I, I do have a red. Okay. Um, now I've got to decide where this is going to go. I think it will be a pocket. Sorry, looking for my red ink pad just to get those little edges that are still showing that white paper core just camouflage just a little bit feeling I'm going to be using the three-in-one quite a bit for the pages that I took out of that book. Stuff stuck to it. This must be from Christmas. <laughs> the red usually only comes out at Christmas. Much as I love red. I have my favorite cozy red chair in my living room. All right, I wonder if that would be a good spot for a pocket. A smaller page. Hmm. I wonder if I should back it and No, that's a good writing page. Ledger paper is really good for writing on. No. That would get in the way of things sliding in and out, and I think I would still need to glue this onto something stronger. I may have to think about that for a while. Now, this young lady. I just thought she was so pretty. She caught my eye, so she's going in this journal. Wonderfully good. I was so enthralled, not only by Shabby Soul's um, Shabby Soul's interesting journals, but by someone else on TikTok who makes journals, and now I can't remember her name. I hate when I do that she was making journals that required the crocodile that um, is the stand-up model and I'm afraid it made me decide to go and get one so uh, so I did and I didn't feel like it was too much of a luxurious purchase because 
my handheld crocodile is feeling a little bit wobbly and I wouldn't be able to live without my crocodile making journals eyelets and and that sort of thing it's it's very very important so I just thought well that can do everything that the handheld can and it can do more so I think I'm going to glue her onto tea dyed paper and make her into a journaling card. Hold on. There we go. You know what? This will give me a chance to show you one of my new favorite glues. For when you want something really nice and smooth. So this is just an off cut of some tea dyed paper. And I was at Walmart the other day and I uh, I like that side. It's got lots of staining. I want to use it. And I spotted this jar of good old rubber cement. And I thought, you know what? In all these years, I've never used rubber cement. So I thought, I'm going to have some fun with some rubber cement. And you know what? Things dry really nice and smooth with rubber cement. I just have to make sure I've got my room nicely ventilated with my little window open and my fan going. I don't think it's that toxic anymore or else they wouldn't be able to sell it anymore. <laughs> but just in case. So I'm just going to put her down and give her a good Let's see how that goes. I've never done it with one of these this kind of thing before, but I have been using it even in this new journal. I'll have to find where I used it. I'm going to pause for a second and put her aside and let her dry for a second. Okay, so I'm going to, I got the side that has that nice, that has that nice um, dark part of the tea dyeing. So I probably shouldn't have trimmed her so hastily, but she's big enough that I still have room to get a nice smooth edge. I'm trying to decide whether to take the sewing machine around the edge or not. And whether to embellish her or not. Save that, that's big enough. Look how pretty she looks. Anyhow, see how nice and smooth and no bubbles. Um, I don't know, I'm just I'm, I'm playing with it and enjoying it. I'm going to figure out what to do with her. I see I'm at 32 minutes. See, it doesn't take me long to fill 30 minutes. Tell me what you think about these. Leave them long for the next owner. Let the next owner decide. Trim them right off and out of the way. Like, just clip them right there. Tempted to do that because there's enough there's enough going on here. This is, these edges are busy. Um, or just give them a bit of a trim so that the new owner could still put little charm or, you know, 
Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this funny little book. It's it's new for me. It's uh, This was different, and I must say, I will definitely make another one of these again. Not that it's done. It's not done yet. All this sewing that I did in here, um, for example, this and this and this, I still have not pulled the threads through and knotted those. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to turn off the camera and just imagine that I've got now a half an hour ahead of me of tying knots in little tiny threads. <laughs> Yay! Thanks for joining me today. Hope you're doing great. And uh, we will get together soon. We really will. I'll try to get out of my... What did I call it with Nancy? Vujo. I lost my Vujo video juice to to put out videos. And, uh, I've just been quietly working at my desk. But I, I get the impression from others. I know like when I watch Johanna and and such, sometimes even Nick the Booksmith, we sometimes won't hear from her for weeks. I couldn't go weeks. I, I do have stuff to say. <laughs> but some artists can go quite a while um, and just quietly go about their artwork. Um, but I really, I must admit, I'm very excited with how pretty this little book turned out. So I want opinions. I want opinions on these. I also want opinions. Should I just leave that the way it is? It is very pretty. Um, or should I put something on it? I was going to put... See, I'm still going on. I'm still talking. Catherine. I was going to put lace around the edges. But I'm liking this. I like the fabric I chose. I like the sewing that was done. I like my Chinooki knots that are the, the Chinooki tangles that are there. So I have time to think about the lace around there. All right, I'm really going to go this time. When I say goodbye, I'm really going to mean it. I'm like a teenager back in the olden days when they'd be on the kitchen phone. No, you say goodbye. No, you say goodbye. You say goodbye. So goodbye. Have a great few days and we'll get together soon. Take care. Bye.